Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the National Assembly of the Republic of Srpska at the International Summit uh, Step Forward. The host, the Speaker of the National Assembly of the Republic of Srpska, Igor Radojcic, will welcome you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the National Assembly of the Republic of Srpska. Welcome to the panel of the International Summit Peace and Reconciliation a Step Forward. It is my pleasure to welcome you here in the building of the National Assembly of the Republic of Srpska, and we are the co-organizer of today's summit and uh, the host of today's panel. May I first welcome uh, the organizers and the initiators of the summit, uh, the European Academy of the Banyaluka Bishopry and Zrinski Institute. Currently, we are hosting 150 participants of the summit from different countries of the region, Europe and the US. My warmest welcome goes to our dear guests uh, who will take part in the first panel, Mr. Bozo Ljubic, Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives of the Parliamentary Assembly of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mr. Josip Leko, the Speaker of the Parliament of the Republic of Croatia, Mr. Ranko Krivapakovic, the Speaker of the Parliament of Montenegro, Mr. Nebojša Stefanovic, the Speaker of the National Assembly of the Republic of Serbia, Mr. Fahim Škalic, the, spe the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the Parliament of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, thank you for attending the summit. Welcome. Today I was asked by the American organizers to speak on women's, women's role in the society and their political work for peace. Would this be a need? to solve Sadie Finchi because Sadie Finchi is not done by the people living in this country. It was done in Dayton, in Ohio, in America, by, in by internationals. I'm sure not by women. I have not counted how many women were represented there. I think no one. Con perhaps uh, Mrs. Albright. Consequently, the EU considers at least, at least peace processes as opportunities to promote women empowerment, gender equality, gender mainstreaming, and the respect for women rights within resulting peace agreements. And therefore, I ask him with the parliament to stop this. And I'm congratulating the Catholic Church to do the European schools in Sarajevo, in Dravnik, in Banja Luka, in Bihać. They are really working on what I said, on, con on concil reconciliation, on the empowerment of these young kids to build really a society. And uh, I therefore, I think we need much better and much more education. I don't want to quote all what I have written on paper because I think uh, what I said is enough on education. You can be sure that me as, a, as, as chairing the Committee of Education, we are just dealing with the new programs for education in the European Parliament. And you can believe me, you will be in all of these programs of use of education, of culture. And please take part. It is the future of your young generation which is dealt in these programs. And I can only tell you, look in this paper and you you can find a lot of possibilities and challenges for the youngsters, the youngsters, women and men. We have just passed in the parliament another resolution on women's rights in the Balkan. We stress the need for women in the Western Balkan to take a prominent role in society through active participation and representation in pol political, and economic and social life at all levels. I want only to ask you, you are, most of you are living here in the region, how would this country be, where would it be if a part of these political big bosses and leaders would be female? Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Zrinsky Institute for Peace, an organization which I helped co-found with professors, scholars, and students from Harvard University, it is both an honor and a pleasure to have this opportunity to address you here today. 
I would like to reflect on my participation in the summit, which has a deeper meaning for me. I recall hearing stories about Bosnia and Herzegovina of Banja Luka from my grandfather. I have black and white pictures at home. My grandfather was born here. He went to high school in this city. I take pride in that. It is a great thing for me. And that is why this summit is so important to me. This is part of the world that means so much to me. And that is one of the reasons behind establishing this institute. In November of 2012, Bishop Komarica gave a lecture at the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. The lecture set a process in motion to add support to continue to move this dialogue forward. That is what the summit is about, moving the dialogue forward. The mere fact that you've taken the step forward is dramatic and should not be understated. Imagine the possibilities, the possibilities that your actions here today have opened for this region, but for the world at large. Ladies and gentlemen, I am both impressed and humbled to be in your great company today. Moreover, grateful to be allowed to contribute to these noble efforts. You are making history here today, and I would like to move that history forward, and I believe that we will do it together. In support of your step forward, the Zrinsk Institute for Peace has brought some of the most renowned and promising practitioners in their respective fields to share with you both their knowledge, techniques, and experiences with political leadership. We hope to provide a blueprint for change that will have impact and continue the process and not have it end here. I would like to thank the National Assembly, the Republic of Srpska, for hosting a day of the summit and for its both logistical and financial support to make this such a success. I'd like to acknowledge the Academy of the European Academy, Dr. Sabina Luka, as the principal organizer who brought us all here today. Finally, I'd like to thank the generous financial support of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, who made this summit a reality as well. But it's about you. It's about your presence here. You are making historic events. Welcome to the summit on peace and reconciliation. Step forward. Thank you. The world is looking for leaders. The world is looking uh, for uh, individuals, uh, individual nations, individual uh, people, but also collective groups of nations and people to try to give an example. We have a tremendous amount of issues uh, that we believe at the Kennedy School at Harvard uh, that can be solved, um, or at least go a long way to be solved, if we implement leadership principles. Talk about commonality. How can we work together? How can we as a people, as a group of nations, in this part of uh, the European continent, uh, create a better world uh, for the people we represent? But this part of the world, this part of the European continent, has too much history and too much culture to continue to allow these divisions to pull this part of the world apart. And so what we're going to try to do today is begin a discussion. Begin a discussion that says we're going to concentrate on cooperation and we're going to accentuate Unity. First of all, thank you uh, all for being here. Uh, genuinely believe this is a historic moment. Um, th there, there's so much, uh, we believe, talent and ability and history and culture, uh, natural and human resources here, um, that th the impetus for this was we need to get people communicating. We need to help try to move the dialogue forward. Um, our attempt uh, to do that, I think, was successful. We had uh, not only a group of uh, political leaders, uh, but religious leaders that came to the table. Um, and as you saw, uh, if you were in the room today, uh, said, yes, we need to have a dialogue. We need to continue this. We need to cooperate. We need to work together. Our goal was to find areas of commonality. Our goal was to say, let's set aside differences and let's work from 
uh, uh, things that we have in common. And I don't think that the Zerensky Institute and Drazen and the folks that helped put this together could be happier uh, with the outcome. Now we move forward. We're going to have some workshops uh, this afternoon, and we hope indeed to begin uh, and, and establish a leadership institute permanently uh, in this part of the European continent. And we hope to get that done. But this was a first step, and we believe a very successful one. Uh, echoing what Professor Jarding just said, I think moving forward and continuation is the important part, and that is through this Institute of Leadership, where we can bring not only the best leaders uh, that we can share and learn from this region, but also contribute with new cutting-edge techniques and approaches to resolving issues. And I think what Professor Jarding said during the end of his panel discussion was, can you commit to being again at this stage or in a similar setting and communicate. I think the leaders both echoed your sentiments and agree with your idea that yes, they can. And that is, I think, in my respects, a very successful event. And I think the fact that the engagement was there and that there was a dialogue made this event even more successful. Thank you.